going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade J.J. Williams, and today we take a look at a 1960 Hitchcock classic, which many people feel is the birth of the slasher films, 1960s Psycho. Starring Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, Janet Lee, John Gavin, Martin Balsam, John McIntyre, Simon Oakland, Frank Albertson, and Pat Hitchcock. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, today is going to be the first of two Alfred Hitchcock classics that we're going to take a look at here in the final days of Classic Horror Movie Month. And with 1960s Psycho, a lot of people feel that this film gave birth to the slasher genre that would later on go and be occupied by such characters as Leatherface, Michael Myers, Freddy, Jason, Chucky, etc. It all starts here in Psycho with Norman Bates in a lot of people's minds. Now, our movie opens during a Friday afternoon rendezvous in a Phoenix, Arizona hotel as real estate secretary Marion Crane and her boyfriend Sam Loomis discuss their inability to get married due to Sam's outstanding debts. When Marion returns to work, she decides to steal a cash payment of $40,000, which has been entrusted to her for her to deposit at the bank, and then drive to Sam's home in Fairvale, California. En route, Marion hurriedly trades her car in arousing suspicion from both the car dealer and a California Highway Patrol officer. Marion stops for the evening at the Bates Motel, which is located off of the main highway and kind of hides the stolen money inside of a newspaper. Proprietor Norman Bates descends from a large house atop of a hill overlooking the motel, registers Marion under an assumed name that she uses, and invites her to dine with him for dinner. When Norman returns to the house, he has an argument with his mother, which Marion overhears regarding her presence there. Norman returns with a very light meal and apologizes for his mother's outbursts. During dinner, Norman discusses his hobby as a taxidermist, his mother's illness, and how people have a private trap that they want to escape from. Marion decides to drive back to Phoenix in the morning and return the stolen money. But as Marion showers that evening, a shadowy figure appears and stabs her to death. Soon afterward, Norman's anguished voice is heard from the house, yelling, Mother, oh God, Mother, blood, blood. Norman then cleans up the murder scene, puts Marion's body, her belongings, and the hidden cash inside of her car and sinks it into a swamp near the motel. A week later, Marion's sister, Lila arrives in Fairville, tells Sam about the theft, and demands to know Marion's whereabouts. But Sam denies knowing anything about her disappearance. They are then approached by a private investigator named Arbogast, who tells Lila and Sam that he has been hired to retrieve the money. Arbogast discovers that Marion spent the night at the Bates Motel and begins to question Norman, whose nervous behavior and inconsistent answers 
begin to rouse Arbogast's suspicions. When Norman implies that Marion had spoken to his mother, Arbogast asks to speak to her, but Norman refuses. Arbogast then updates Sam and Lila about his findings and promises to phone once again in an hour. But when he enters the Bates' home in search of Norman's mother, a shadowy figure emerges from the bedroom and stabs him to death. When Lila and Sam don't hear from Arbogast, Sam then goes to visit the motel. He sees a figure in the house whom he assumes is Norman's mother, but she ignores him. Lila and Sam then alert the local sheriff who tells them that Norman's mother died in a murder-suicide 10 years earlier. The sheriff concludes that Arbogast lied to Sam and Lila so that he could pursue Marion and the money. Convinced that something happened to Arbogast, Lila and Sam drive back to the motel. Sam distracts Norman in the office while Lila sneaks into the house. Suspicious, Norman begins to become agitated and knocks Sam unconscious. As Norman rushes to the house, Lila hides in the fruit cellar where she discovers the mother's mummified body. Lila screams in terror and Norman wearing his mother's clothes and a wig, enters the cellar and tries to stab her. But Sam appears and subdues him. At the police station, a psychiatrist explains that a jealous Norman murdered his mother and her lover 10 years earlier. He mummified his mother's corpse and began treating it as if she were still alive. He recreated his mother in his mind as an alternate personality, almost as jealous and possessive towards Norman as he felt about his mother. And when Norman is attracted to a woman, mother takes over. Norman had also murdered two other young women before Marion and Arbogast were killed in order to hide his mother's crime. The psychiatrist concludes that his mother has now completely taken over Norman's personality. And as Norman sits in a jail cell, he hears his mother saying that the murders were all his doing as Marion's car is retrieved from the swamp. Now, believe it or not, this is the first time I have seen Psycho from start to finish. I've seen bits and pieces of it before. Obviously, I've seen the iconic shower scene. You can't be a fan of horror movies and have never seen that scene before. But start to finish, I had never seen this. I can honestly say that now I am glad that I have seen it. I don't know what took me so long to see it, but it's one of those things where I've owned the film in my collection for at least two years now. I want to say I picked it up. It, I have it on Blu-ray. I want to say I actually picked it up, believe it or not, at the fair two years ago. There was a vendor out there who had a stack of DVDs and Blu-rays with all the other stuff that he was shilling, and I picked up Psycho. But for whatever reason, I've just been sitting on it, and I've never watched it. But with the review show, and especially wanting to talk about the classic horror movies, the ones that opened up the floodgates for the modern horror movie, there was no way I could do this month and not address Psycho, especially with the history involved in it. I mean, like I said, arguably 
the original slasher film, Norman Bates. You've got Janin Lee as Marion Crane, a.k.a. the mother of Jamie Lee Curtis. You have a character named Sam Loomis, who would also be the character named for the doctor in Halloween, which starred Jamie Lee Curtis. You've got all these little nuances about this film. Hitchcock, arguably at his finest. And that's saying something because there are a ton of great Hitchcock films. We'll get to another one here in a couple of days. But arguably Hitchcock at his finest. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I'm curious, though, why it took 20-something years for there to be a sequel. Personally, I don't think there should have been a sequel. I think Psycho is a great one and done. But there is a Psycho 2, 3, and 4, all with Anthony Perkins back in the role of Norman Bates. Pick up the timeline from here. I'm just curious, though, with the fact that they did a sequel, why so long in between? Curious. Wish I could get the answer to that. Regardless, though, when it comes to my ranking of Psycho, I I think I can say wholeheartedly I give it four out of five stars. Only reason I'm not going to give it higher is because this was my first time seeing it start to finish. So for all you guys out there that hold Psycho as a five-star film, don't come after me. But since this is my first time seeing it, four out of five. Possibly down the road, if I get through all of these films that I own and I decide to start going back through movies again, maybe on a rewatch after it's had some time and I've watched it a few more times, maybe it'll increase in its star rating. Maybe it'll decrease in its star rating for me. But four out of five stars, I feel, is a great rating considering the fact it's my first time seeing the film. What do you guys think of Psycho? Let me know. Those of you that have seen it before, leave your thoughts and comments over here if you're watching the premiere, or if you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Whatever you do, though, when you get out there on the social media, let's try to get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios, hashtag Renegades Reviews, Hashtag Renegade Returns, and of course, the ever popular Hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade JJ Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. When we stick around the year 1960 and we discuss another film, which sadly is in the public domain, the original Little Shop of Horrors. Starring Jonathan Hayes, Jackie Joseph, Mel Wells, Dick Miller, Myrtle Vale, Wally Campo, Jack Warford, and in his fourth movie, Jack Nicholson. You're not going to want to miss out on that one tomorrow. Right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. Right back here on an all-new Renegades Reviews when I get into... The Little Shop of Horrors. To all my loyal fans and viewers out there, tuning in for the premiere, leaving your thoughts and comments over here. Thank you very much. 
I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Likewise, all my loyal fans and viewers that tune in a little bit later in the day, watching on demand, leaving your thoughts and comments down here. Thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate all my loyal fans and viewers who tune in on a regular basis. Show me that love. Show me that support. Going back to the archives, digging up the old episodes of Renegade of Wrestling, Dads on Wrestling, Stat Boy Rants, After the Bell with Jeff Meacham, the original run of Renegades Reviews, revisiting those, rewatching them, helping to boost up my viewership hours so I can eventually get monetized and start earning some money on this endeavor. Thank you to each and every one of you who tuned in and joined me here today, and I will see you guys next time.